arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant as what you see. Your heart shall drop and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephra, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, your nation and earth adore Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, the earth of the The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation and earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation and earth will adore you. The second reading. Today, St. Paul reminds us that with the coming of Christ, the barrier of estrangement between the Jews and the Gentiles was shattered. Both were and are invited to form one single people of God under the headship of Jesus, the Savior of all. Let us pay close attention. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed. Through his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co heirs, members of the same body, and co partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 
Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, many from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to be to shepherd my people in Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, for you have found him, bring me more, that I too may go and do him homage. After the audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at the rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures, and over him offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and beer. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for the country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Is the story true? I don't know. 
But in any case, when somebody serves tea for me in Yamcha, I usually use, use this way to thank the person. There are several reasons. The main reason is to respect him, to be polite, and also if there is any chance, maybe this person will invite me for Yamcha again in the future. So it's good to say thank you. Actually, there are stories in different parts of the world with a similar situation. What is the situation? The main character of the story disguises himself. And then, in order to reach a specific goal or a specific situation. For example, Cinderella. Maybe you have heard the Yaba, you have watched the film of Cinderella. You know that this lady wanted to attend the invitation of the prince to go to, to, the, to the banquet and all that sort of, to the dance party. So in order to do so, he, she had to disguise himself, herself. But why am I sharing these stories with you? Actually, these stories are related in some way to the feasts that we are celebrating in our faith during these days, especially Christmas and the Epiphany of the Lord. We can say that God disguises himself because God becomes a human being. But we must have in mind a very important point. There is a fundamental difference between the fact, this fact, God becoming a man, and the stories that I shall just share. What is the difference? In the story of the emperor, for example, when he disguises himself as a peasant, as a farmer, his role is fake. Actually, he's not a peasant. He is, he is the emperor. But in the case of God, becoming a human being, this situation is not a fake situation. God really becomes a human being. That is why we say that the identity of Jesus has two parts. He is God, 100% God, and he is a human being, 100% human being. And this is the mystery of incarnation that we are celebrating these days. But the question is, why does God become a human being? We know it. Because he has a special goal. And the goal is to share his life with us. He uses this way to share his salvation and his eternal life with us, men and women. I would like to invite all of you to consider the story of the Eternal to reflect about the mystery of incarnation. God disguises himself. He uses this marvelous way to share his love with us. But it is interesting to know that most Jewish people didn't recognize him. And one of the main reasons for this situation is because they were expecting the Messiah full of power. They were expecting a great leader. However, other people were able to recognize the Messiah in this child Jesus. Who? The shepherds, very simple people, and the magic, wise men. The magic played an important role in God's place, playing the plan of salvation. If you notice in the gospel, the gospel says, Behold, magic from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. From the east. It means that the Magi were the Jews. They were foreigners. How is it that the Magi were born foreigners, were able to recognize the birth of the Messiah? It is because they had a special attitude with some characteristics. And I would like to share with you four of these characteristics of this history, of this uh, attitude of the Magi. The first one is that they had a keen and sharp heart. What does it mean? They looked up at the stars. That is why they discovered that one of them, or many, had a special message for them. Without this watchful attitude, they have never discovered this star. Number two, they had an open attitude. Because imagine you that they needed to follow this star. Although they didn't know where the star was leading them, they were open and willing enough to follow it. Number three, willing, willingness to share. Because they met difficulties, but they served.
resurrection day in time. One of these difficulties is that in the middle of the, of the way, the stars suddenly disappear. It's like when we have a phone, we are going to a new planet, a new place, and we are using Google Maps. Have you used Google Maps in your, in your cell phone? Yes. Imagine that you are following the Google Maps and you are going to a certain point that you have never been before. And suddenly, GPS loses the connection. <laughs> Where should I go? It happened to me once. I, was, I went to, to a funeral parlor in Yokohama. And then I wanted to try a new way. I got going to the NPR up to, uh, I don't remember what is the name of the last station, but it was another way to get to the to the funeral car. But when I went out from the NTR station, then suddenly the connection was lost. I didn't know if I should go to the right or to the left. Then I, then I followed my, my instinct. I said, I will go to the left. And guess what? I was wrong. I was going farther and farther from the funeral car. At the end, I had to come back and run in order to to be late. But I didn't ask. The energy asked, they fire, they search, and they didn't give up. And number four, an adventurous spirit. They were willing to go to a place where they had never been before. If they were so concerned about staying in their comfort zone, they would have never left their homeland. If so, they have missed the chance to meet the Messiah. Now the question is, how are these four characteristics related to us? Actually, God uses different ways to be in contact with us and to show his love for us. But we must keep in mind that God uses different ways to be in contact with us and to show his love for us. But he could not appear directly to us and tell us, I love you, my will for you is this. Instead, God usually disguises himself. He uses indirect ways to show his presence. Let, let me give you some example. The Eucharist. When we attend Mass, we know that the host, this very small piece of bread, is the body of Christ. We need the faith, and we have to recognize him through the faith. But this is Jesus Christ. The Bible is a book, apparently. But for us, is the word of God. But he also disguises two special brothers and sisters, especially those people in need, and also those people who care for us. In order to discover and experience the presence of God in our lives, we need to be aware of these four characteristics that I just mentioned, and to improve them in our faith life. Let me repeat them and see how they are related with us. Number one, a keen and sharp heart. We need to open the eyes of our hearts to be watching, to discover God's presence in our daily lives. But there is a difficulty, because the worries of our daily life can prevent us to be aware of God's sight. Instead of going, looking at the stars, we are just looking at the floor. Number two, an open attitude. Because sometimes God uses unexpected ways to communicate with us. Usually, we just hope that God responds to our prayers in the way that we are expecting. And maybe we are not open enough to see what is God's ways. Number three, willingness to search. We need determination in our faith life. We need to face difficulties and ask for help. God might speak to the person that who are, who are close to us. And number four, an adventurous spirit. It means that we must transcend the usual ways that we have to be in that we use to be in contact with God. Maybe this new year is a, a good opportunity to renew our relationship with God in new ways. We need to leave our comfort zone in our way of living our faith. Brothers and sisters, we are celebrating the Epiphany of the Lord. As I mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, it is a kind of second Christmas. 
We are celebrating the birth of the Lord, but the, 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 the meaning that Jesus was born not just as the king of the Jews, he was born as the Messiah of all men and women in the world. Today we are celebrating that God disguises himself for us. We are celebrating that God uses his most these marvelous ways to share his love and his salvation for us. He became a human being. So let us start this new year 2023 by renewing our faith through the strengthening of these four characteristics. A keen and being sharp heart, an open attitude with God, a willingness to search in, a, in an adventurous spirit. May God bless each one of us on this feast day. Amen.